What is up, Bruins fans? Today I'm bringing you a clip from episode 363 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast. For real, Sam Smith and Mark Allred joined by special guest Kenny Kaminsky to discuss their thoughts on Bruins training camp. Training camp started this week, and I am excited because um, I want to give a shout out to a BNG guy who's been on site, Tom Caliuti. I have been living vicariously through his Twitter because he has been giving me the giving us the best updates on the Bruins training camp start. I want to scroll through real quick. I just want to show you the amount of stuff he's been tweeting about the training camp. This is all in the past two days. Like he's been putting out um, the lines for each session the past two days. Um, like he's been tweeting out that Tyler Johnson was working with Coyle and LaSalle today. That's pretty good stuff. I would want to know that. Um, especially since this could be what this what Sunday's roster looks like. So who knows? Um, I want to note something. So Elias Lindholm did not participate today in practice and training camp as he's maintenance, according to Montgomery. We'll talk yeah. about um, other guys in a minute. Let's talk about Elias Lindholm. Starts yesterday with Zaka and Pasternak. Apparent, good, apparently they looked really good. Tom was saying they looked good. Scott McLaughlin, Connor Ryan, those guys all saying they look good together as a trio. That's good things to look forward to, right, Mark? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, once a player can come in and, and you know, have enough time to be around, work out with the guys, the new, the new players to a new team, it's just the better. Um, and, you know, this is just a little bump in the road, you know, just getting ready for the season. This is going to happen. Hopefully it's nothing long term, but. You know, I, I think that this is going to be a great chemistry builder um, with, a, 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 you know, a tenured player in Boston and a, and a new free agent that's coming in and Elias Lindholm. Um, I'm really looking forward to his contributions as as one of the better two way forwards that were available on free agency this summer. And I, and I know I'm repeating myself and I say that a lot, but I really love the due diligence that the Boston Bruins did on a player like this and Zadorov as well. These guys were being scouted and, and preyed upon um, for these this moment years ago, you know, two or three years ago when <laughs> when the Bruins said, you know, in, in, in 2024, the summer, these two players might be available. And they and they did the due diligence and, and watched a lot of these games and and pounced on them appropriately. You know, we do now get we're not going to get the Bergeron. We'll never have Bergeron. But we do have a player that has a two way game. Um, and, uh, and obviously with the door off, you know, that, that just, that goes, uh, uh, for, you know, what kind of player he is. He's a hard player. He's going to be a nasty player in front of the crease. I, 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 I pity the fool that goes anywhere near the blue. I really do. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it, it's an interesting training camp because there's so many opportunities for younger players to, to scratch their way into the lineup. And I think that this is, a better opportunity for the youth than previous years when a lot of guys came in you know, the rookies and all this guys, you know, the low money guys that were pushing these, these are uh, the prospects, but the prospects just couldn't do it. I think the Bruins are giving these younger players a better opportunity now to secure a roster spot. And if they don't, they have a PTO guy in Tyler Johnson that's waiting in the wings to, to capture that uh, roster spot. Speaking of Tyler Johnson, he had some words for the media. I want you to check this out. We'll be back in just a minute. I was reading a piece the other day about uh, the surgery you underwent a couple of years ago, and it really seems like you've had a resurgence in your career since then. Can you just talk a little bit about maybe how your game has changed or how you've maybe been able to regain form since undergoing that really dramatic procedure? Yeah. Uh, when I was in Tampa for the last few years of my career there, a lot of days I was uh, pretty painful, pretty awful. Um, I, I couldn't lay out my stomach and turn my face one way. There's some days were good, some days were terrible. Uh, going into games, not being able to move around, it's not really the most ideal situation. So, uh, fortunately, slash unfortunately, in Chicago, there I got hit hard enough that I definitely needed to do something about it. Um, Chicago was very, uh, very good that they allowed me to kind of do what I wanted, did my research. Um, obviously, that was right when I was going through all the same things. So, uh, we had the same agent, and he was kind of filling me in on a lot of the stuff, which was awesome. And uh, I'm really thankful that I. 
did it, Dr. Grant did my surgery. And, uh, he made it so easy to transition wise. Now it's just, uh, you know, I'm able to train like I used to before, which I probably didn't do the last four or five years of Canada there. Uh, I'm just able to really kind of push myself to be a little bit better. And now I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about getting hit in certain ways or anything like that. I just try to play my game. And um, I think it definitely helps. Yeah, and I also want to shout out Tom Caliuti because that that video and audio came from him, and this is the kind of work that uh, him and and um, and Jason Cook and Andrew Bluestein uh, for our team get when we get into the locker rooms and and and, and interview these players. Um, so um, I'm really proud of this team, and and obviously proud of Tom and the and the hard work that he does here. Um, so and he's going to be a regular at the Warrior Ice Arena too because. Uh, he's getting um, more and more access there as well. So it's all about content and, and you know, creating relationships with the Boston Bruins organization. And I think we're at a really good, uh, good spot right here for both entities. Absolutely. We heard Tyler Johnson, uh, who's on a PTO coming in, uh, coming out of surgery. Now he's training normally like he used to. Uh, he's getting top line minutes on the sessions with Charlie Coyle. And Fabian LaSalle, who Coyle and LaSalle will most likely be the second line center and right wing pairing to start the season. Uh, Kenny, I'll start with you. What are your thoughts on Tyler Johnson again getting top line minutes on this uh, in session reps within training camp? Uh, I like it. I just want to say, like, it, you know, if he's in th- if he's in that much pain that he was describing in Tampa and he was still performing the way he was performing, I mean, that is seriously impressive. And I'd like to see what he can do now, if, even if it's not on the Bruins, you know, somewhere in the NHL. I'd like to see what he does, you know, when he's pain free. But I like I like seeing him get top line minutes because I think he could be doing that, you know, somewhere else. So, Mark, what are your thoughts on Tyler Johnson uh, getting top line minutes with Coyle and, and LaSalle? Uh, it, it's a good opportunity for him to to, um, you know, get show what he can do with uh with certain talent uh regardless of what line it is um like tom caliuti's video i i like what he said about what, what happened after he had the surgery it just and to paraphrase a little bit it it seems like he's getting like the second wind of his career late as he as he ages as a veteran so and it's good that he still has it enough that he get he's getting a pto right now to to try to earn more work and stay in the league. Um, but I like, I like this too, because it pushes some younger players as well, because uh, Johnson's going to possibly push uh, Mirkulov uh, and, and, and uh, Patra for third line center. And he can play the wing, he, you know, for second line wing if needed and so on. I, I like the versatility. And again, I'll say it, and I know I'm repeating myself, the Boston Bruins thrive on players with versatility. Um, anybody that can go up and down the lineup there, they think of is a value asset. Um, do I like, I don't like the mid game changes a lot that, that, uh, Jimmy Montgomery does and so on with those versatile players, but still it's good to have, uh, you know, a player that can play multiple positions just in case something happens. So, um, I like it and, 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 and I'm rooting for the guy, you know, I, I like the veterans, you know, I like to see what they can do and, and, you know, if they can keep going, great. If they can't, I, I totally understand that this might not be the team for them, but hopefully they might have an opportunity somewhere else before they uh, either go over to Europe to continue to make some money and continue the career or, or hang them up. Absolutely. Sorry, I was yelling at somebody for because they were, they were saying some not-so-nice words right outside my door, and I had to yell the words, hot mic. Um. <laughs> Fun being in college and doing a podcast live. Uh, I want to transition to Matt Patra, right? Matt Patra looks is 14 pounds bigger this year, which is a good thing. He bulked up. He came in at last training camp at 175, and now he's at 189. He bulked up, and he's getting looks at the wing. He has more to say about that. Let's go back to Tom with a clip from an interview with Matt Patra. 
Matt, what was your impressions when, when the coaching staff came to you and said they want to see you at, the, at wing for a bit? Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've played wing in the past and you know, I'm comfortable there. You know, uh, Obviously, it's a little bit less skating than center, so maybe you know, uh, reserve a bit more energy for playing offense, which is where you know, I like to hold on top down low and have more you know, energy for that. It'd be, it'd be good. Um, I, I mean, I'm ready to play wherever, whether it's center or winger, and just Invest. Yeah. How did it feel today? Good. It was good to be back in the ice in a practice environment. I felt like the pace was pretty high. Um, obviously, maybe it'll take a couple of days to get acclimated to that kind of stuff again. But it felt good to get, you know, hit a couple of times and have the puck on your stick to kind of compete with that again. Well, what do you take from from last year now? When you had like the summer to kind of reflect on it, what kind of lessons or things did you take from last year to say, hey, I'm gonna apply that to this year? Uh, yeah. For me, I think it's just. Um, Better decision making around, you know, red line, blue line. Uh, you know, we don't always have to make a play. There's always kind of that next play where it's like, I'm kind of, I was kind of a guy last year where it's, I always wanted to hold on to something when, you know, sometimes it would put me in a bad position to get hit or, you know, stuff like that. So definitely that. And also, um, kind of just have a really long summer for me just to, I mean, we had, I had three months at the end of the season where I was just lifting and not really skating. So for me, it's just, Put on weight, lifting, and uh, not really having to worry about the hockey part. And then as the summer went on, just getting as many reps and uh, you know puck as possible, skills skate just because when you don't skate for three months, uh, some of that stuff kind of goes away a bit. So just getting reps and getting, uh, getting lots of skates. So that was Matt Potra in the locker room yesterday. Um, you know, Potra saying he's willing to play anywhere whether that's the center, whether that's the wing, up and down the lineup. Mark, I don't know if I don't know if this is just me and Kenny. I don't know if it's just me. I like hearing stuff like that out of young guys. Kenny, what do you think about that? Uh, I I really like it. Like you guys talked about last week about, you know, how sometimes you could see Potra kind of get thrown around. But, you know, he took this summer and he bulked up and he looks good from the pictures. He definitely looks like he's got a little bit more uh, meat on the bone. And, you know, if he – if he says he's comfortable at wing, I fully support it because when you look at, you know, the team, it gives, you know, a guy like Merkulov, who's really like a pure center. And I didn't really, I don't think I was like really excited to see him move somewhere else. Cause I really think he's a pure like Russian center. So if it opens up an opportunity for a guy like Merkulov to take that third or fourth line center, then I fully support it. Mark. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Real quick, I, I had something else on my mind. What was what was the question? What are your, I like hearing from young guys that, that that they like playing up and down the lineup about Matt, like my like Matt Potra. What are your thoughts on Potra saying stuff like he wants to play up and oh, down yeah. the lineup, center or the wing? What are your thoughts on that? Sorry, guys. Um, I yeah. like this move, uh, regardless of a lot of people uh, optimistic about it, calling it Sednika 2.0. I don't think this is the same situation. Um, I, I like this move because I think it gives Matt an opportunity to get a little more involved in board battles and so on. Like he said, it might slow the game down a little bit for him because he's a natural center and wants to move. Um, but he has played there before, so he has a background in it and he knows how to do it. But, uh, I don't think he's fully ready yet for, um, a wing duty. Uh, but I think that he's going to learn a lot in this preseason and this training camp on how to be uh, um, a good agile forward that could play in those situations. Um, and I and I think he can do well. I know he's not like the biggest guy, and I know that everybody loves the you know the the, the training camp bulk up and who and who gained weight and everything all during the off season. It's going to take some time, you know. Uh, but I I I. I do like the opportunity that he'll get there. Um, and if that, if that keeps him in the lineup and he thrives at it, then good for him because that just makes him another uh, valued asset when you talk about versatility and how much this team loves it. I want to point out something this, cause this might be why they're looking at him on the wing last season. He only won 43% of faceoffs He was in last year. That could be why that could definitely be why. Um, not like 43 is a bad number, but if you're looking at like Potra was being compared to as the next Patrice Bergeron, which was crazy to me for people for saying that, but I heard people say that 
Bergeron didn't lose under 50% of faceoffs in his entire career, season to season. Rookie year losing 40, winning 43% of draws. Maybe they're looking maybe at a wing job for him on the right side, maybe to work on his board battles, but also to give other people a shot who's better at the dot than Patra. You know? Um, maybe this opens up if LaSalle makes it the second line right wing and Patra works the wing. Maybe this is Morgan Geeky's shot to have a legitimate, solidified third line center role. Maybe this is Trent Frederick's shot who has been getting reps at the dot in the past two days of camp. Maybe it's Trent Frederick's shot. Morgan Geeky. Maybe it gives Merkulov a shot. Maybe it gives Johnny Beecher a chance to rise up that lineup a little bit. It pushes guys. And that's, and well, besides, I'm going to hold that thought for a second. It pushes guys, but also uh, it allows the Bruins to have a little bit of versatility around their lineup. I want to, I want to point this out since Lindholm did not practice today, Matt Patra was taking top line reps as a center with Zaka on the left and Pasternak on the right. Zaka, Patra, Pasternak does not sound terrible. It sounds pretty good. Um, especially with Patra's playmaking, Zaka's creation of offense, and Pasternak's scoring touch does not sound that bad. Mark? No, not at all. I would call that the zip line. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> oh, I, should, uh, I wish I came up with that myself. Damn no, I it. like it. I, I like it. Um, but yeah, another player that uh, that I think is going grossly underrated, and one reason why I'm going to say this, I think Morgan Geeky is going to have a bigger role and a better year uh, this Thank year. Um, if you look at NHL players and, and the trend of players that come to Boston, or regardless of what NHL team out there. I think that first year is always an adjustment year. You know, there's a lot of emotions going on. Your family's getting used to a new area. You're getting used to a new team. Um, and then I, the second year is always the better year because you're comfortable. Um, I, I think that Morgan Geeky is going to have a bigger impact than people than people think. Um, you know, I mean, look back at the trend. I mean, Lena Solomark had a good year, his first year here. Much better year the second year. Nick Foligno had a good year. Much better second year. You know, so it, it it does it does correlate to them, you know, producing a lot better when they're a lot more comfortable. Speaking of which, I want to give a special shout out to Nick Foligno. Congratulations on being the next captain of the Chicago Blackhawks. That is an absolutely awesome thing for him. Um, Uncle great, Nick. Great leader to have in that locker room as the voice of the team. That's awesome. Back to your point on Morgan Geeky. In his first season with the Bruins, even though he was still adjusting, still put up 17 goals and 39 points last year for the Bruins. He was averaging just over a half a point a game. That's not too bad. That is not too bad, especially for a guy who is playing second, third line minutes for the most part. Yeah, he could possibly get 25 this upcoming season. And that wouldn't and be I bad. Want it. I want yeah. especially this is a contract year for Geeky. This is the last year of his deal. He absolutely same thing with Trent Frederick. I said earlier, he wants this. He wants a, a contract. He wants to stick around in Boston. Give him that. He's got to work for it. Right. Kenny. Yeah. You know, I saw like, I don't know how the money's going to work out next year, but I saw people saying like, you know, it might be one or the other, but uh, you know, I think both players have been great the last two seasons. And I'd love to see a guy like Geeky, or a guy like Frederick play with Patra, you know, just to protect him a little bit. Which is why if LaSalle makes the lineup, I think the third line is going to be Frederick Patra Geeky. Wow, oh, that would be sick. Because Geeky, because Patra's protected. Frederick's big, Geeky's big, Patra is protected. He's going to have two people there ready to go. And, and plus the, not only the skill there. And not right? only that, is if you're running, if you're running Patra in the middle. And you're not too, and you're not really thrilled about his faceoff percentage. Trent Frederick can come in and win you some faceoffs too. You know what I mean? You can so you can just mismatch. You, if, if Frederick can come in and then ease out, and then you know go back and have Potter go back to center. Also, Morgan Geeky can play center too. Yep. yep, that's three guys who can play center who are both who are all pretty good on the wing. That's good. Yeah. Swap guys around. 
You don't have to have the same guy play center every night. You don't even have to play have the same center against against the same person. You can have like, let's say against Toronto, you can have Geeky face Tavares the dot. You can have Frederick face Matthews, and you can have Patra face Max Domi. Hey, it's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> you could totally do that. Like you, we haven't. I haven't seen anything like that before, where That's you could ta- potentially have three centers taking face-offs on the same line in the same game. I don't think I have never, I've never seen that before. I'm I'm sure it's happened, but I can't remember the last time that's, that's a, that's been a thing for this team. Huh? Well, Kelly, Peverly and Ryder almost, they had two. Were you even born back then? Of 2011. I was six. Okay. (laughs) All right. That team, that team, man, I'm telling you what, I go back, Defumi, you are the man. You go have all those amazing highlight videos of the 2011 run. Gives me flashbacks to my to my young childhood, okay? All right. Hey, before we move on to the training camp, uh, before we move on to the live questions, I do want to say that uh, one person that I, I see a lot of chatter about when I reach out and ask is uh, is Justin Brazau. Mm. I think I think um, this is a a, a bigger opportunity for him uh he came into the um into the Bruins last year uh up from Providence um got into a bunch of games did get injured I get it but I just think that this is the type of player much like Brandon Bussey both of these guys just elevate their 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 work ethic to another level when they know that there's a huge opportunity in front of them each one of them rose through the levels of minor pro hockey and, it, you know, Bussy's trying to get to the NHL while, while, you know, Brazil was trying to hold on to the NHL dream. And I think that by, by thinking that way and this off season and believe it or not, and I know he's notorious for not being a great skater. There's some people that after two days of camp have seen a huge jump in his step. So maybe Justin, identified that this off season and said, I need to work on my skating and possibly went to a skating instructor or hired one uh, for uh, multiple weeks. Um, Nothing wrong with that. Um, And I wouldn't even throw out Justin being on the second line, right wing. If needed, he can, he can jump from the fourth, the third, even second line, you know, if needed, I'm not, I'm not totally sure on that, but it's still a great option to have when you have just like so many, other pieces together on the team just in case the youth can't crack the lineup. And also the stick handling that he has for his size, he could easily play second line minutes as long as he fixes up his skating, gets faster. Um, This guy, uh, the game, the game, the goal he scored in game one against Florida, that is an unreal goal for, for a guy, his size and his speed. His stick handling is insane. Um, I really want to yeah. see him. What? And to go goal line extended and come out and have the time to get that goal past the goalie. I, what was the defense thinking on that? I was just like, what's going on here? But good for Justin. And he was on his knees when he took the backhand shot. He was <laughs> on his knees because he got knocked down by Kulikov. Because he got on a breakaway. How do you let that guy get on a break Anyway. Besides the point, Brazil is awesome. He's going to ease, he should make the NHL roster. Uh, another quick thing about Brazil is he's going to be a very important player for this uh, Boston Bruins uh, defense that, that is desperate for shot generations from the blue line. Shot generation from the blue line um, because of his hands that, that you alluded to, Sam. The guy could park his ass right out front of the blue, and, um, and he's just got a knack for tipping pucks. For the big man, you know, so. And also, he's he. I've said this obviously a couple times. Put him on the power play unit. Net front presence on the power play is a good thing. Remember if when they Shara, did it? When, yeah, I was just about to say that. Remember when they said, you know what? We're gonna put, we're gonna put. Here we go. We're gonna put Sagan on the on the uh, the far cir- on the left circle. We're gonna put Brad Marchand on the right <laughs> circle. Bergeron at the center point. We're going to put David Krejci right in the slot. 
And you know who we're going to pop in front? Big ass Zidane Chara pop himself right in front. Nobody can see a thing. That's how the game seven game tying goal happened, by the way, because Chara was in front of the net. Oh, yeah. So... Plopping big people in front of the net works, guys. It's it's hockey fundamentals. You put Brazo and Trent Frederick on the power play in front or Morgan Geeky, you're bound to get rebounds like that. That's just yeah. hockey 101. Kenny, just do you agree keep, with that? Just keep possession of the puck, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree with that. Who doesn't like seeing a seven-foot guy stand out right in front of the net? I mean, how is a goalie <laughs> possibly going to see around that? And you got guys like McAvoy and you got guys like, you know, I saw, you know, Lindholm doesn't score a lot of goals, but we did saw, we did see that, uh, that shot in uh, game seven against Toronto that, you know, these guys have really good shots and these guys can put it in any area in the net. If you have a big guy standing in front of that, there's nothing a goalie can even do. Like what you saw, be sure to come back next week for episode 364 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast for real Sam Smith and Mark Allred. We'll preview the 2024-2025 season. See you then.